Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast, and not only am I at the ocean, but this is the very day that Finding Dory comes out. I suffer from short-term memory loss. It runs in my family. At least I think it does. I use the Kimapure Elite and uh, Nuvo 16 and you know, a couple teaspoons on each, in a bag on each side and change it out like once a month and it just keeps everything pure and clean, no phosphates, everything's good to go. Uh, it's pretty much a worry-free system because of the Kimapure. Well, here I am at the ocean. What a great place to talk about my next FinCast. Of course, it involves finding dory, but I'm going to be showing you some researchers who are very close to being able to breed dory tangs, hippo tangs in captivity. I'll get to that in just a second, but first I want to talk just briefly about the movie. Really enjoyed the film last night. Today is the actual day that it comes out, but the uh, there was a uh, screening last night available here at the beach, so I went to see it. I get the feeling they're shushing us for a reason. And believe me, if you liked Finding Nemo, you'll like Finding Dory. There's no two ways about it. A nice little environmental touch in there. Uh, message about maybe we're polluting the oceans too much, but it wasn't over the top, it wasn't bothersome, but as an aquarium keeper, I kind of like the fact that Disney took the time to put that in there, and I think the message will sink through to the next generation that grows up watching this film. Ah, I trust Becky. You trust Becky. Becky's eating a cup. Wow. Does this mean we have to say goodbye to Dory? I don't know why I thought I could do this. Dory, you are about to find your parents. And when you do that, you'll be home. So I'm here at the beach, I'm on vacation, and I'm enjoying it very much. This is the Atlantic Ocean behind me, and that pretty much is more or less south because of the beach that we're staying at. Of course, the Atlantic Ocean is not the ocean that Dory comes from. Dory is a tang that comes from the Indo-Pacific area, so think Indonesia, think Hawaii, the Pacific Ocean and the reefs out there. And, and uh, this is not the ocean that you will find a, uh, a hippo tang in, so if you're coming to the beach on the east coast of the United States, don't bother looking around for hippo tanks. But I will tell you that somewhat ironically, in Florida, which is hundreds, if maybe not a thousand miles south of here, there is actually some pretty significant hippo tang research going on at the University of Florida. But it really feels like every time that we stock a tank now, uh, there's a very good possibility that that's the one that's going to produce juveniles. That's Kevin Barden, and he is a researcher at the University of Florida working on the Hippo Tang project. Now, you may have seen my recent video on the successful breeding and raising of yellow tangs in Hawaii, and that was the very first time that that had been done. It was announced earlier this year here in, uh, in 2016, and a guy named Chad Cowan, a researcher, Dr. Chad Cowan, uh, had, and his team figured out how to do that. Well, Barden has been working with Callan's team and applying what they learned about yellow tangs to the hippo tangs, and that is why they're so close. After the group in Hawaii, Chad and, and, and their group raised the yellow tangs, I went down to visit and uh, we, we looked at what they were doing and um, we're trying to replicate that. Scale is really the big thing. Um, everything has to be bigger. Everything has to be more food, uh, bigger tanks, more water flow. Um, and so we've been increasing our our systems and our, our capacity uh, to, to meet that. Um, but their, their metabolism really starts to explode after about 15 or 20 days. And it's about meeting that demand. So at this point, maybe you're asking yourself, well, why should I care? Maybe you're just interested in it because you've learned about Dory after watching the movie. If you are, welcome to the world of aquariums. If you already keep aquariums, I think it's important to look at this from a couple of different ways. Number one, um, any tang, any hippo tang that you buy in an aquarium store anywhere in the United States right now was caught in the wild. There are none that are raised in captivity. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It provides jobs for the fishers in third world countries who are catching these tangs. Uh, of course, they're very popular and, and you can keep them in your aquarium relatively simply. We'll talk more about that later on. And they are a, a population that is not in any way threatened or endangered, so there's plenty of them in the ocean and there's no indication, as I'm saying this, that too many of them are being taken off of the reefs and therefore jeopardizing the population. There appears to be a lot of hippo tangs tanks if you want in the ocean so not a bad thing but one of the things we've seen in recent years in the aquarium hobby is the uh, ability to 
through aquaculture or raised in captivity clownfish, nemos. And since that's happened, uh, there have been amazing breakthroughs and there's really no need anymore in the hobby to take any Nemos off of the reef, and I think that's kind of cool. The other thing that we've found with the Nemos, and we would expect to find with the dories, the hippo tangs, is that uh, these fish are born in captivity, so they're used to captivity. They're raised on flake food, they're raised on pellet food, and so when you get them in your aquarium, you don't have to make that transition from the ocean, where they're eating whatever they eat in the ocean, to whatever you want to feed them in your tank, which typically is not the plankton and the types of things that they find in the ocean. So uh, this is just an easier, less stressful way to bring a fish into your aquarium, which is going to result in you having greater success and you having greater enjoyment and obviously less stress on the fish. So that's a roundabout way of saying why this would be a good thing. So the question is, how long? It won't be immediately, that's for sure. As, as I speak right now, Kevin Barden uh, has not made that breakthrough, but we heard him say in the interview that he thinks it's any time now, and it's only been a couple of months since that interview was recorded as I'm speaking right here uh, by the ocean. So who knows? But once that happens, then commercial breeders have to reproduce that success, and then they have to start producing and growing those tangs in numbers that will satisfy the demand in the hobby. So stay tuned on that. And of course, if you want to, please check out my video on the yellow tangs, which shows the success they've had there, and they are now in the process of transitioning from the uh, laboratory breeding over to the commercial side. So hopefully they'll see that success soon. Well, by the way, I've kept the same Dory Tang, Hippo Tang, in my 120-gallon reef for over five years. Now it's one of my absolutely favorite fish, and there's a good reason that these fish are so popular in the hobby. And also, uh, Carl and Aquarium Systems, which is a company that I own and work with with my son, Ben, uh, is uh, maintaining an aquarium right now that has 8,000 gallons in it. It's a living reef, and we have a huge population of Dory Tangs in that tank as well. So we know a thing or two about keeping them happy, keeping them alive, and if you're somebody new to the hobby or somebody who maybe is interested in adding a hippo tang to your aquarium, I'll be doing a video soon on how you can do exactly that, tell you some of the pitfalls, tell you what to watch out for, and we'll show you that video coming up soon. So having said that, please subscribe to FinCasters so you don't miss that video when it comes out. Please click around. Even if you're on the freshwater side, there's lots of videos here on the channel that I think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast. Sea lions. They are natural predators. They could pounce at any moment. Uh, my, don't you worry. Oh, get get off the rock. Get off the You go far wrong. Don't you worry about a thing.